over here, getting a little bit more pretty. <laughs> 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 oh, we're getting ready to a couple of videos, couple of shoots. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, no, but we're getting ready, you know, getting the face, the gamer, game face ready over here, and uh, we'll get it to set right now. Every star has moments in their career that move them forward, that announce to the world that they're here not just to stay, but to change things. Let's go. Today feels like one of those days for this star. Let's do it. He's the youngest player they've ever put on the cover of MLB The Show. Let's go! And he's handled the obligations of the honor just as naturally as he plays the game of baseball. Good mark right here. The camera, just play it, looking badass. There we go. Yeah, that's good. Okay, and dial it down. Being the youngest cover athlete on, on the show is, is just, that makes it even even more special for me. Let's go! That's how that team's career does it, baby. It's a wrap. I grew up playing this game, and now I'm the cover of it. It was definitely mind-blowing for me when I saw the cover. Damn, the bad flip. <laughs> That's the face. That's a gamer face, you see? <laughs> Dream come true, boys. Bien, bien, vamos. Fernando Tatis Jr. might just be the most exciting player in baseball. It sounds like an opinion. It looks more and more every day like a fact. This kid is amazing. He doesn't play the game the way it's always been played. But that is precisely the point. He has all the things that you can't teach. Tall, good looking, energetic. And he's got that charisma, he's got the it factor. This is a very unique player. This guy is the truth. He's a showstopper, not only a game changer, but a showstopper. You cannot blink an eye with him. I'm gonna walk it off, or I'm gonna save the game in the ninth inning. <laughs> this is Fernando Tatis Jr.'s world! This kid wants to go out there and be a daredevil. Whatever you cannot do, I'm gonna try to do. It's danger. <laughs> it's danger the way he play. He brings that swagger, that demeanor every single day that, you know, some people don't like, some people love it. They want me to be sorry, okay, I'm sorry. But I, I already hit the Grand Slam, so there's nothing we can do about it. Yeah, I didn't like it, personally. This game has changed a lot right now. I tell them, whatever you feel like to do, just do it. If they're already talking about it, I don't need to change nothing. The league is in a whole lot of trouble. When I came up at 18, there was a guy playing center field that was 24 called Ken Griffey Jr. He wore his hat backwards. He was the Michael Jordan of our game. I think Tatis has, has the same opportunity. Make everyone remember why they love this game. I could not wait to deploy as much capital as possible to market this young man. He's got mix people on tune on their TV or come out to the ballpark. He's becoming the face of baseball, and I hope it's for a long time. El Nino, you are unbelievable. Growing up, watching his dad play, I think it's just in his DNA that he was born to be a ball player. There was no doubt about it, he was gonna be great. I mean, I feel like I haven't changed. <laughs> I'm still the same kid that grew up in the, uh, San Pedro Macorís. I just get back to my homeboys and to, to the family. You know, I, I gather every single friend I have out there, and then, you know, we just start, start having good times. To me, it's like a relaxing time. This is where Fernando Tatis Jr.'s story starts on an island in the Caribbean, in the city he was born 22 years ago. Growing up in San Pedro de Macorís, I feel like uh, it was just the best thing that could have happened to me. You know, and just that vibe growing up close to the beach, it was just great. You don't want to know the things that, that, that happened in my house. 
And uh, you don't want to be a ranch owner because something's going to happen to you. It's a, it's a funny house. When my family is together, I'm, I'm kind of the clown of the family. <laughs> what are you seeing right now at this level is only maybe half than what he was doing as a kid. You know, playing around, had some fun and dancing, moving, and, and that's him. When you talk to anyone here in San Pedro de Marboris, it always feels like it goes back to baseball, which only makes sense because in this island city, baseball is life. San Pedro is a place where we really love baseball. If you are a boy, if you don't play baseball, I don't know where you're from. <laughs> San Pedro is the mother area for baseball players in the Dominican Republic. More than 100 major leaguers have come out of San Pedro. Fernando Tatis Jr. proudly wears 23 on his back to honor the number that identifies the city in the Dominican, just as his father did after he grew up here living a very different life. Back in the days, San Pedro is a tough play to grow up. For my dad, it was, it was not easy at all. You know, he was one of those poor kids that go on the street and uh, just never go out there, just clean your shoes to get a little bit of money to find something to eat. He didn't have a dad that, that helped him and guide him to get the, to the right path. I grew up with my mother. It was kind of tough for me, you know, grow up without my father. So, you know, that's why I try to be the best that I can, I think, for my kids. I was very lucky, you know, having a father who played 11 years in the big leagues. I still have memories. We always used to go like to the field just to play, run around the bases. I was taking Junior everywhere with me. So he had to taste. Remember taking him to the field early, 11, 11 a.m., just to pitch in batting practice during the season. So he was watching the game all the time. Being in the big league clubhouse since I was a young age and seeing how players manage themselves, seeing how players take care of business, it definitely make me a better player since a young age. You know, one of my favorite memories um, from my dad playing it was when he was with the Mets. He came and pinch hit in the eighth inning and it hit, it hit a grand slam. Fernando Tatis Sr. played 11 years in the big leagues for four different teams. But unquestionably, it's one night in 1999 that he's most remembered for. You're going to see uh, power against power here. Fastball, and it's a grand slam. Woo! That night at Dodger Stadium, the Cardinals just kept raking. And later that inning, the bases were loaded again when Tatis came up for a second time, with Chan Ho Park still on the mound. Has anybody ever hit two grand slams in one inning? Wouldn't even bother to look it up. The moment, the situation, there's a lot of things need to happen for you to hit two grand slams in one inning. matter how much talent Fernando Jr. had and how many times is the, the face of the franchise, that I think would never happen. Has it hit you yet that you made history? I mean, I just still don't believe it. That small piece of baseball history will always be part of Fernando Sr.'s legacy, but it's already been eclipsed by another contribution, a son who bears his name and has always played like a natural. I'll tell you what, Junior, it was something very special from the young age. So I see a lot of talent on him. When he played in the winter ball as a young age, so they, they started calling El Nino. La va a sacar El Nino, ta, 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 tis. El Nino de San Pedro. You know, El Nino is the, is, is the kid that plays the game you know, with passion, with love. And, uh, you know, I was one of the best players out there. You know, people start chanting out and people start screaming and uh, 
it just became a thing. So I was like, okay, I guess this is my nickname. In 2018, El Niño became the starting shortstop for his hometown winter ball team, Estrellas Orientales, and led them to the brink of a league championship. The game to clinch to the finals. It was one of the most important games on the season. My dad was a manager. My brother was there playing, giving it all. He was like the main player, like bringing the main energy to the team. Winter ball is just as intense as Major League Baseball, if not more. And for the native Dominican player, it means everything. It was a guide on um, first and second, uh, nobody out in the ninth inning. And it was one of the best closers uh, out there in the, in the winter ball team. I like Bunny, you know, in some situation. And I give it a sign. Why not? I've <laughs> never been a good bunny. <laughs> In the first two pitches, I missed the bunt twice. So, you no, know, he looked at me and uh, he, he would tell me, like, okay, go for it. I just crushed that ball. <laughs> and uh, everybody was going crazy, you know, the, the fans, the team. My brother was in the stands, he jumped to the, to the field. <laughs> One of the best moments that have in baseball so far. I mean, I've talked to so many Dominican players over the years that they rather win a championship in Dominican and they think it's more intense with more pressure because you have the whole island paying attention to these games. Down there, you're playing for blood. And sparked by El Nino's big home run, La Estrellas went on to bring the championship to San Pedro for the first time in 50 years. Victoria para Las Estrellas Orientales. It was very good for Nino as a player because that year and that winter ball, he knows uh, what it takes to be a winner. Fernando Tatis Jr. went from, oh, that's cute. His dad was the guy that hit the two grand slams against Chan Ho Park in the same inning to, wow, he's going to be better than his dad and better than his dad's friends and maybe better than anybody his dad's ever played against.